Is Asia the true key to Asian American male representation? Let's talk about it. That is what I've been trying to tell you here in the West. They only think that Asian men is nerdy, good with the QWERTY, not good with the flirty. We got to talk about this Reddit post. It says 1 to 1.5% of the U.S. population is Asian men under 30. Don't expect high performance in every aspect of culture and life. Whoa, this is sounding a little doomer, a little negative, bro. Let's delve into the post because a lot of people are discussing this. Right, right, right. He says, Andrew, he does go on to say, it wasn't fully what you said. He goes, you know, we need to put pressure on the community to try harder, but there are just hard limitations due to population size. He goes through the math, Andrew. 8% of the U.S. is Asian. That's being generous, by the way. 50% of that is male. 40% of that is under 30. You got, you know, do, do, do the math. It puts you at 1.6% of the population of guys who could be good Asian bros for each other. Mm, so he's saying, he's making the case that Asian Americans, due to the small numbers, especially Asian American males born in America, that it's going to be tough for them to live a good life or find proper representation without Asia. Right, right, right. I don't think he's saying that it's impossible to live a good life, but if you're like one of those people who's looking for somebody who looks like you to achieve like AA1 status mm. in something before you get activated. Uh -huh. He's like, don't wait for it because the numbers simply are not there. Okay, how about we rephrase it this way? He's trying to say that if you're an Asian American male, it's going to be tough for you to benefit and ride any other wave other than the wave from Asia. Right, right, right. Because he's saying the numbers just aren't there for Asian America. But okay. of course, there was a lot of reactions to this. Real quick, Andrew, I got to check his math. I did the math checking on chat GPT, Andrew. It's actually 0.5 of 1%. Mm. It's actually even lower than 1.6% if you like sort of, you know, really look at like Asian American born in America, right. Asian males. So you're saying uh, like us, like American born Asian males between the ages of 18 and 45 is about 0.6% of the American population. Right, right, right. And if you take out South Asian, I think South Asian people are Asian, but I do think they get presented with different stereotypes, mm -hmm. some similar, but some different, Andrew. It actually breaks down to one third of 1% is people sort of like us between 18 and 45. Wow. So I guess what I want to say is we have a list of about five things that Asian American men can be doing right now that would help them even though we're in such a tough position. We're a third of 1%. Yeah, well, first of all, I do wanna say that I agree with the numbers. The numbers make sense to me, but I also wanna say that Asian, that English speaking Asian males in the West and just English speaking Asian people, men and women in the West in the past 10 years, particularly the last five or six, have made tremendous headway and made tremendous leaps and bounds. Now, that doesn't mean we're still not getting picked on. That right. still doesn't mean we're not getting overlooked. That still doesn't mean that blah, 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 the dating imbalances and all the uh, perception of the Asian male. Those are all still there, but it's gotten so much better. Right, right, right. So we're gonna get into the recommendations, guys. By the way, it's a lot more optimistic than the, than the numbers seem. So Andrew, here was the first reaction. We are so cooked. If we as Asian American men didn't uplift ourselves by now, we've been here for 100 years, it means we've accepted our fate. Well, here's the thing about being here for 100 years and stuff. There's just different individuals, man. It's not like you've been in America for 100 years. I haven't been in America for 100 years. Just because there was Asian people here in America for 100 years, it doesn't mean it's like a linear growth and assimilation. And also, back then when you assimilated harder, you just, your bloodline and culture just disappeared. Right, right, right. Somebody said, we'll never be unified like Jewish people because we have so much beef from the motherland and some of us won't even offer coaching to our own cousins. And in the worst case scenarios, we won't even offer positive coaching to our own brothers. Um, somebody said, no, no wonder why we face so much adversity. By the way, Andrew, these were the Doomer comments. Here are the more optimistic comments. He's saying, dude, if we go by 1.6 of the percent of the American population, that's actually still 5.3 million people because America is such a gigantic population. Right, but if it's really 0.6% of the American population, that's about one third of that, you right. know. Even by the most conservative estimates, Andrew, it's still 1.2 million Asian American bros born in America. 
between the ages of 18 and 45. Right, okay. right, right. And Canada's at like a little bit better percentages, maybe like quadruple. But why do you have to limit yourself to Asian bros between the ages of 18 and 45? Right, 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 yes, right, right. Yes, that might be your core tribe, people you relate to. Yes, 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 I understand. No, those are the people you relate to the most, but that's crazy to say you can't relate to Jensen Huang because Jensen Huang was born in Taiwan. He does not fit underneath these statistics. Um, or that's like saying, if you were like white, you couldn't, or whatever, you couldn't relate to Elon because Elon is from South Africa. I don't know. It just is weird. I don't know. So anyway, not only that, this guy says, yeah, but if you look at that 1.2 million of Asian bros that should support each other, we're split up amongst six major ethnic groups that don't fully get along with each other. Mm, I think we're getting along pretty well nowadays for the most part. The but, younger ones. But yes, the older generation definitely has a lot more separations. Um, This guy said, listen, guys, we got it so good in the macro stats, we tend to just focus on the negative. Mm. This is what this one guy said, because obviously the macro stats for Asian uh, guys in terms of like government declared earned income are quite good, mm -hmm. right? And then of course, last but not least, Andrew, let's run this clip about trade-offs. The only person that is gonna change your life is you. No one's coming to save you. No one's coming to rescue you. It's just you. Different people are treated differently. And it's different in different ways, right? Like for example, I'm a first generation immigrant in this country. Some people will see that as a bad thing. Other people will see that as a good thing. There are trade-offs to everything. Right. Boom! Okay, Andrew, let's get into five different ways that Asian men Asian, born in America can maximize their situation despite being less than 1% of the overall U.S. population. Mm. Point number one, Andrew, this guy said, yo, change can be extremely slow, but please reconnect now with your Asian roots and be a bridge for Asian culture to the West or for Western culture to the East and all the good parts. Yeah, I mean, I guess a bridge meaning that there's I always imagine like a bridge, there's different parts of a bridge, right? There's the bridge that's connected to the actual mainland of one side and the mainland of other. But there's pieces of that bridge that you build to connect each other in the middle. Now, some people on this bridge are more of the ones that are rooted further in America and not really reaching too far in Asia. Right, you're saying the starting bricks. Yeah, and then there's pieces that you know in America even that are more on the bridge side of maybe Asia, you know, maybe the more uh, Asian born people, the international students, right. you know, people who have connections back home that are fluent in both cultures and languages and stuff like that. So I think everybody is a different part of this bridge, but which part of that bridge are you? And some people, Andrew, at least if it's an old school stone bridge, will need to be the keystone, yeah. which is the middle yeah. connector I piece. mean, if I had to be honest, I think for me, I'm more like on the American side, but maybe I'm either this side or this part here, but I'm probably not the side that is connecting to Asia just because of my language barrier and, you know, somewhat cultural barrier. I do think with the technology and the language, you know, AI translation tools, it's easier to bridge the gap than it ever has been before. Yeah, maybe maybe some celebrities that bridge the gap kind of well was like Daniel Wu, Jay Park. You know, those guys are American. At least on there. the entertainment side, but there's a ton of examples on the business side. Yes, on the business side, even more, obviously. Uh, point number two, Andrew. Be an entrepreneur not controlled by the system. Oh, get out of the matrix. But then ultimately, some other guys were saying, man, but ultimately you kind of got to get in where you fit in and understand what your strengths are and just make the most amount of uh, money possible as quick as you can while not scamming people or doing bad things. Yes, listen, I don't think that you have to only make money outside of the matrix, as Mr. Tate would say. Obviously, there's plenty of good lives and money and network to be made in the system. You know, we have, we have a Korean friend who works in finance. He uses money. He ended up moving to an Eastern European country to find the life that he always wanted. There's nothing wrong with that. Right, right, right. And man, I think people do have better, different skill sets. And like you said, not everybody's cut out to be entrepreneurs. Some people are meant to be entrepreneurs. Some people are just meant to be a high paid cog in the machine and try to minimize their costs to stack bread. And then you take that disparity and you invest or you do whatever high yield things you can, risk versus reward. This guy said, I wouldn't be surprised if more Asian and American men in the coming decade start to move back to Asia. I definitely think you should take a trip to Asia. I don't like know. a long trip, not just a I, tourist I'm trip. I'm not going to tell everybody to move to Asia, move there forever, but you got to spend at least a, a a trip where you spend at least a month or two out there. At least if you have not done that, 
you're missing out. Point number three, Andrew, this always pops up and we've been covering it lately. Just work out and go to the gym <coughs> because if you're going to be 0.3 of 1% of the American population, it's better not to confirm stereotypes, right? Yeah. Hey man, let me, let me say this. Go to the gym, take some fitness classes of some sort or join, join some type of recreational adult sports team or in college, maybe something that is co-ed, step outside of your bubble after you've built up some muscle, go take some Pilates classes. I've done a Pilates and yoga class and it has just taken me out of my comfort zone and put me around a female population that I, I would have otherwise not really thought I'd be around. So- You mean models? Yeah, this Pilates class I just went to was definitely models. I don't know how I was viewed in it, but they were very beautiful women. But anyways- Regardless, step outside of your bubble and build it up and get fit and confident. Right, right, right. Point number four, Andrew, have friends and hobbies. And this was a controversial one, Andrew. Some people on the internet were stressing, please have hobbies outside of gaming. All right, guys, here's the thing. There's not really anything wrong with gaming as long as it's not like the only hobby you have. I think the issue is that Yes, there's a lot of computer programmers or a lot of careers that are a tech, uh, attached to gaming, especially uh, like PC gaming. Or, or a lot of guys who are really good at day trading also yes. game, right? Because they're very like multi-monitor centric. Yes, GPUs. by all means, there is definitely transferable skills. But overall, it is not, and I do not think it is even comparable to real life team building and stuff like that. It's not even comparable, guys. Are you going against gaming? No, I'm not <laughs> going against gaming. Gaming's fine. I'm just saying... Stop saying it's comparable. I know that there used to be the argument of being like, well, there's like transferable skills of team building <laughs> between Fortnite and you're working with different people. Right. No, it's right. like cle not, it's not as, it's like one third. Clearing a of room in Call of Duty is way different. I mean, it's like a trillion times different than clearing a room in real life. I mean, or whatever. It's like <laughs> half or a third as useful as people say it is, okay? No, that's real talk. Point number five, Andrew. Please put work into grooming, fashion, and social skills. Now, a lot of people are saying that this stuff is super common sense, but why is it that so many people still neglect this particular, you know, these three things? Yeah, I mean, I would say a lot of the time, like a lot of people don't have friends, close friends that are into grooming and fashion or nobody who's going to sit them through the first beginning steps to get them started. Please, if you have a friend that you know more about grooming about and you know they need help, just ask them, hey man, can I just like help you clip your nose hairs? I'm serious. Hey man, can I just like, yo, this beard would look good on you. You should get it. Dude, 10 homies could put in $1 each and get a USB powered nose hair clipper. And they could, I mean, I'm, not, you know, some people might have hygienic things against that, but if you clean it every time, that means one pair of $12 USB-C nose hair clippers could get the whole squad's nose hairs on point. How about instead of buying your friend that new gaming mouse for his birthday, why don't you go buy him either a gym membership or some male grooming Kid. You know what it is? I feel like it's people don't feel the incentive in their everyday life. And I'll tell you this, guys. I'll tell you the story. I know a guy who had some B2B SaaS software. If you guys work in that field, you guys know what that is. And he got rich. He became a light millionaire off selling his company, okay? This guy moved to Shanghai to become a high-end bartender. So every day, how he looked, how dapper he looked, because, you know, it was one of those bars where it's like mimicking, you know, the 1930s, where it's like very like pomp and circumstance and GQ. And I'm saying that this guy... He purposely created a life for himself where he was coming in touch with like super hot women and like being very social and talking up people from all walks of life. Yes, was there times where he's like, he, people don't even know I'm like a SaaS software multimillionaire behind the service job or whatever, even though it's a luxury service job. But it's like, he still was able to figure it out to get what everything that he wanted out of life, even Damn. though it was like a little bit of a unconventional sort of a pairing. And then point number six, Andrew, Find some Asian role models that you can look up to that are like way dominant in their field. Mm. So I think that here's the big thing. You got to find Asian role models. And here's the truth, Andrew, with the internet nowadays, a lot of them are going to be from Asia. Yeah, that's fair. Like, like we said, if Asian Americans, according to the math of the original post, and we checked it out, I checked it out on multiple sources, Google, Gemini, ChatGPT, are less than 1% of the population 
of people like of like bros you could look up to and not everybody even is like thinking with that mindset uh you got to look to asia and for example Andrew, in the fight world you got akiyama guo Lun. Rod Tang from Thailand. These guys, Andrew, are not only experts at their skilled sport, they're actually super buff and their viewed is super cool and these guys got money and these guys get girls, mm -hmm. okay? Andrew, but what about super rich tech founders? Andrew, the richest man in the world right now is Jensen Huang. Mm -hmm. Born in Taiwan, raised in America. What, you can't look up to him because he wasn't raised in your Midwestern little town? You know what I mean? That's crazy. Andrew, Joe Tsai, shout out to, there's so many guys that did it so well in the tech and investment field. Um, of course, Andrew, you've got more thespians or people with more emotive skills, musicians. You know, you got these different guys right here. Of course, you got martial artists. And of course, Bruce Lee, Andrew, was sort of a blend of like everything that we're talking about. Entrepreneur, business founder, philosopher, and an athlete, and an actor, mm -hmm. and a model, whatever, whatever. I mean, this, this could go on and go on. I guess, ultimately, Andrew, what do you think about all the different reactions? Some people said, we're cooked. Some people said, no, we're not. Some people said, yo, listen, listen, guys, we're such a small population. Everybody's got to get locked in immediately. Um, yeah, I mean, expecting everybody to get locked in is unrealistic, but I think those who can should and those who can travel should, and those who can help others absolutely should. If you believed you're cooked and your situation is already in shambles and your future is 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 gloom, then and, and usually let Andrew, let's be honest here. Usually Asian guys believe their social future is gloom and doom. It's not really their like ability to get a career yeah it's actually not it's actually not at this point if you try hard enough yes it does take more effort but if you try hard enough your social life is not done unless there are certain factors that if you rank super low in like all the tiers and all the categories it's going to get tougher and tougher do but you for the regular asian dude do you agree though that people should look back to asia and not view it as like oh i'm asian american i can only look for asian american role models <clears throat> yeah i mean i think the issue is sometimes one, it's the language barrier. Two, you kind of look at like Asian society and sometimes the way it's ran is so different than American society. And then three, sometimes sometimes as an Asian American, you do have low key a little bit of the superiority complex where you're like, or like they're weird out there. They're like goofy or they're like, like I wouldn't eat that thing that they're eating over there. First of all, not all Asians in Asia eat those weird things. Sometimes it's just people in the village. But, you know, I'm just saying like you see a bunch of stuff from Asia that you as an American, because you're still American on the inside, you can't help but <clears throat> kind of separate yourself from. Right. And I just think in 2024, now is not the time to do that at all. And in fact, guys, listen, in the description of this video, I got a email login for a very, very interesting project about connecting, you know, Asian America to the East with a bunch of male empowerment. Let me know if you guys are interested in that. Let me know what you guys think about the post. Let me know what you guys think about this, you know, statistical breakdown that is very either doom and gloom or it's just extra motivation to get locked in and get motivated and be focused. Let us yeah. know what you think in the comments. So section if you below. guys want extra content about, you know, particularly the Asian male situation or improvement or whatever, click on that Google forms and send us your email. All right, you guys, let us know. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.